So today it's time for a call for request of an hour, which is called Do You Like My Tight Sweater by a band called, or a group called Maloko. Never heard of this band. It's kind of like, when I was looking at this cover, it's like, is this like a kid's music or something? But nah, I looked at the other covers and stuff and um, I looked into a little bit of this artist right here and um, doing a little bit of like research because there's nothing really like on Genius or anything written about them. So they're kind of like an interesting band to get into maybe. Um, but this came out quite a bit of a long time ago. While it's from the 90s, mid 90s or stuff, I was like kind of like thinking, ah, oh, it's going to be this kind of album, right? And it's from the 995, um, and I think it's going to be like some maybe albums I've did going maybe into like some trip hop or stuff like that. For example, I did uh, Rexop, for example. Also, it could be going into that into um, that stuff, down tempo and maybe some more dancier stuff. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so this band right here is, looks pretty interesting though. Um, it's a Sheffield or Sheffield based dance pop duo. So yeah, the best way to find out what this music sounds like is to just listen to it, of course. And we got 17 tracks right here, some interludes on this one. So not every track is like five minutes long or something. So yeah, 17 tracks. The first track is called Fun For Me. Let's get into it. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's something I've never listened to actually before, if I think about it. Like, of course I listen to some dance pop, maybe some trip pop, but this is not trip pop. This is not like any conventional dance pop, also from the 90s. Uh, while in the 90s dance pop was also like very sample heavy, for example, like you know, Daft Punk or something, if you know what I mean. Um, but this right here is quite interesting. I love the vocal sound on this one. Um, the grating is so awesome. There's so many layers, like for example, those pianos. I don't know if they're sampled, they could be played. Um, but yeah, the sound is really interesting. I love the songwriting, it's really fun. Um, like, for example, FIFA 4, fun for me. Uh, there's so many like little word plays that are really um, fun. And also, in many, many modes. There's so many uh, different lines right here where I'm just thinking this is just to get a little bit of a fun into this track. And I mean, this track. Is called fun for me, so it kind of makes sense in that. Um, so yeah, really, really fun lesson right here. Yeah, such a fun track um, all over. The drums are amazing. And my favorite part of this track right here is just like the fun lyrics. Uh, I don't know why it's so entertaining for me to listen to that track. 
um, such brain food also those little synth and the arps like the little they're like everywhere and it's um, such a really nice intro to this album I wonder if like every track is going to sound like that one um, but yeah on that first track I'm feeling a nine great track something I've never listened to um, quite something to get into but I think um, I got that pretty quickly like that first track really enjoy uh, I really enjoyed the first track so maybe I don't have to get into the sound to enjoy it that's good, always. So um, we're going to listen to this interlude called Tight Sweater and then we're going to the next track, which is called Day for Night. Let's go. <laughs> Stay a while. I like your peep show magnetized. I saw you in the window. I've been watching you. Don't know what else to do. Quite a different track, a little bit like downtown, not downtown, a little bit the town is a little, just a little bit more silent and smooth from these instrumentals, like they are not these like, like grating sims, yet there are sims on this one that are maybe a little bit like noisy as like the track had before that, but still I think that this one um, gets with these pads um, a little bit of an ambience into this one, which is quite interesting. While the songwriting is also like goes away from the like those fun lyrics and more into um, maybe these smooth kind of like feelings that goes a little bit to um, romantic stuff like that. Uh, for example, like uh, trust me, I'm sensitive, insensitive, and sensitive. I let you go. No need to be afraid. You lose yourself to be, and so on. Relax, resonate, turn off the lights. I saw your eyes on fire the day I will release you, and so on. Um, stuff like that. And this kind of like reminds me of some songwriting we have in soul and R&B and that stuff. Uh, maybe also from the late 90s stuff R&B, which was more accessible and those like dancier sounds and more smoother sounds like this album has right here was going on with synths. And that right here gives me that kind of feeling, which is pretty nice because um, R&B and soul are one of my favorites um, in like the couple of genres I just listened to in my free time. Um, and things like that because if I, um, I listen to so much soul uh, because if I like sample for my tracks um, that I do for hip hop and boom bap I always like listen to my samples that I will use and maybe on work I just like listen to like three records a day which are like an hour long or something so that's kind of like why I got so much into soul but yeah um, this right here gives me that feeling of R&B but yeah I kind of like gets the feeling that this also has a little bit of a Moby feeling to it um, from this track I got but I enjoy this quite a lot so yeah My favorite instrumentals of this track though are like these little strings going into this track right here and like this little song um, like playing around with this um, writing it's just so fun I don't know why I think it's so cute like hubble bubble you know my trouble like who comes up with that that's like so funny and also those little um, like down vocoders coming in with uh, like a second vocals it sounds pretty robotic sometimes but it doesn't get the feeling away to be kind of like smooth track right here I don't know how they did that but it it works <laughs> I mean, quite a fun track right there. Um, I love that one. Day for Night was a track name, and um, it's maybe not as like um, infective as the first track going in with those instrumentals, but I love the smooth vibe on that one and going into a bit, a bit of a different direction with just the sound and the idea of what, what I'm getting for this record maybe as a whole. But yeah, I enjoyed it quite a lot, and I'm feeling something between a 7 and an 8 on that one. 
So let's move on with the next track, which is called I Can't Have Myself. Let's jump right into it. This track is so fun. What the what the fuck? Like there's so much into this one. Um, first, the vocals are so damn weird. Like they're without vocals right here, and just like the straight up talking makes this like so hilarious to me. And the uh, songwriting is so weird, but so fun. I don't know. It's it's so much brain food right now. And I mean, if we if I like listen to music and I just am entertained with just like the weird sounds of it, it got. You got a card on me right there. But right here, uh, gravity will be the death of me. Terminal velocity, follow the follow the vapor. And then, for example, like burst the barricades, don't drink the lemonades, martinis by billiard man. And now it is in dawn, it's a can can. And oh yes, he can can. What the? F what What is this? Like, I can't help myself. I can't help myself. I am the donut that you hold up. Don't be a crab or anything. What the hell? What is this? And it was like, first had this like weird kind of, um, how do you call that again? Reggaeton beat uh, with that snare. Uh, and gets this like pretty like the double tempo with those um, tops and stuff on the track. And it's like so fun, so catchy. The sims are like so infectious and I don't get it why this works so well. But I can see why my why maybe some people would think that this could be a little bit uh, too weird. Because it is weird, but in a, such a good way, in my opinion. I don't know why. What is this? Like, there are also so many sound ideas that I've never heard. Like, they use delay in such a um, weird way. For example, when they delay it in a such like fast milliseconds and such like little milliseconds that it's like stretches this whole thing up and it sounds so interesting um i really would like to know how they uh, produce this thing and it's amazing but yeah let's move on more or less i found you on the floor saying more 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 To this inter interlude right here. Okay. There was the interlude circus right there also. And then it goes into Lotus Eaters. But yeah, I let's talk about I Can Help Myself right here. Uh, fun check. Such a fun check. 
saw all over the place. I love the sound of that track. So many different um, ideas of like getting these like programming into the and then this is that this is like some electronic stuff for that in the 90s is amazing. Um, there must be like um, in the studio on this one like for so long just like getting this like really fun beats across and then you can really hear that they have fun like this song is just like I don't know why but every sentence I just like um, ask myself like how do you come up with that uh, singing a song about nothing talking is from my belly button at the end of the and happiness more or less I found you on the floor saying more, more, more. Peel back the sin sun or beats like quaver. Small banana selected for flavor. How did you get so vexed if I was complex and then I can't help myself? What the hell is going on with these tracks? And this track is a 10. What? I could see if like some people said this is like the worst track they've ever heard. And I can see if some people say this is the best track they've ever heard. Uh... But yeah, for this alright, this is my favorite so far. And I meant it. So let's listen to the track Lotus Eaters. Quite a different track, um, but I like this one. Uh, it goes into a more of like this more smooth of a side that I also talked about at this album um, in the previous tracks, and um, I like this side. This is like so smooth while well, the vocals and all these little like, percussions and that's it's just so interesting to me. And the most thing I like about this is uh, the singing. It's just so smooth and it really resonates and um, harmonizes together perfectly with those backing pads. It's really fun. Um, so yeah, also like the songwriting still goes into the same thing I talked about. It's just like so damn fun to just like um, reading along to and listening along to. Um, for example, spiky lady, shiny queen, don't you tell them what you see in plastic people, silicon. They just like put so many words in a um, short sentence and make so much um, out of it in such funny pictures and it's like really uh, like you're reading a like a comedy book or something while i don't like have to laugh at this or something it's just like very surreal and just really fun i don't know why um it's also not really directly in the songwriting um because like for example be my best friend, be my baby, I'll be there for you, maybe. Don't get on the roller coaster, you burn your fingers with a toaster. I mean, you can get that really into a um, into a songwriting aspect of your real life because this is like so all over the place sometimes and weird. Uh, that is just fun and but easy understandable in that um, kind of sense. But yeah, that's why I enjoyed this. Um, track for example here so much <laughs> She 
Let's listen to this interlude right here, and then we're going to talk about Lotus Eater. Alright, so yeah, there was Lotus Eaters, a very fun, smooth track. Um, it doesn't really have those experimental heavy sides that many of these tracks had before, like those grating synths, for example, from the first track. Um, it goes more into a, just a really fun side in every kind of like way they wanted to um, and honestly uh, that's just like really fun to listen to. Those lyrics are so sticky, they are so fun, they are so um, unpredictable in which sentence they get next to in this little wordplay or in this funny way or um, in this maybe sometimes in this sarcastic way. Or just in a sweet way because sometimes they also talk about like romanticization and stuff and about like sweet stuff like that but um so yeah i really enjoyed that and um, on that track lotus eaters i'm feeling made so let's move on to the next track after this one this interlude right here let's get to the next track which is called indominoid <laughs> Hey, you know, calling on instinct. I took a twist, quietly, wily, taking it, waiting for a fluke, waiting for a sign. I buy now, down with the domino. bit more into tripper while well, not fully going into that because there are like these deep bass we go a little bit back from the sims uh, while there are still like these little pads or like uh, these roads um, which probably are digital and maybe on the keyboard may um, this um, singing is a little bit a different kind of like reminds me of how she called again Amy Winehouse a little bit maybe um, pretty interesting um, the feeling I get from this one is a little bit different from every other side we had so far. It's a little, little bit more maybe in a darker sound, while well, not fully going into a certain way between that. Um, also, as a transition for this album, it has more conventional sides and not these experimental kind of side and songwriting we had before maybe, but um, still, it's all right. Let's move on. For the right. favorite track so far Dominoid but I still think it gives a little bit of a different sound for this album which I appreciate and um, going into the fully of a sound maybe like that we are maybe up to an album which also goes into more different sides into 
uh, like this sound right here that I can really digest in a certain way in a genre or something but I don't think it's really necessary in that way and I have to tell you that it's more smoother but also a little bit darker a little bit trip hop like when not like sampling anything or something or going in a hip hop way if you know what I mean it still stays in the pop side but in a weird way which is interesting and yeah I like that one so I give them one um, a seven. So let's move on with the next track, which is called Party Weirdo. A seven minute check. Let's get into it. <laughs> This says the more like fun kind of like songwriting again while it goes into um, in the more tone that I get um, that it kind of like it makes the concept of a person who is just like this party weirdo and but you have this like disco beat and um, like the jumps kind of like are a little bit hip-hop but still I still think that this goes more into like disco pop especially with those writing synths that are just awesome but um, it's like so interesting this idea. Wizard approaches reward for the weirdo, party weirdo, countless times you have fallen a weird one. And then so on. I just can just uh, picture like this little weirdo which comes on this party and dances like a maniac or something. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty fun track in that sense. Um, but also like the main character of this track also sings like on the first sentence God am I the only sane one around here um, so maybe being normal is like being a weirdo on that track or something like that I don't think it's instrumentally the most perfect one for this album so far but it's a fun one still <laughs> Listen, let's listen also to the next interlude right here. Oh. 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 
So yeah, party weirdo. Um, one thing I wanted to add at the end, there is getting a lot more instrumentation, different ideas of synths, um, getting some filters in there, some like phases, flanges and throwing them all in there. And there are some little interludes in between that. Also some like talking in the back, like talking about like this uh, concept or this like setting that they in at this party or, or something. Um, so yeah, I think that that track is um, just a fun one. Um, while I would wish that the kind of like the main stuff would be a little bit more um, diverse in that sense uh, for a seven minute track. But still think that that one was quite good. So I give that one a 7 also. So let's jump into the next track, which is called No Hum. Let's go. So yeah, no hum. So far goes into a launch kind of pad in the back and these drums are uh, like very micro, go into some 808s just very like um, silently. It's not a track that blows out like some of these tracks on this album. Um, it's more of a minimalistic one, loungy, settle back, a little bit like a Royx sub track in some kind of sense into this electronics sound right here. But it's a fun one. Um, but I wish there would be a little bit more instrumentation besides this, like this launch pad, this hums right here and the vocals and the little strings that sometimes comes in, but still, it's alright. Like Well, no hum, still get some more instrumentals at the end, sometimes they come in these pianos and then also like this um, little deep, um, like little plug basses, bass plugs coming in at the end in this like dance power way and it goes more from back from the launch kind of thing but still stays in the more reserved way with also those 909 um, kind of like um, open hi-hats also, it's pretty fun. Um, but still, I wish there would be a little bit more of an instrument, uh, interesting instrumentation because that track was pretty basic, no hum right there, but still think that it adds up to a nice sound overall. And I still enjoyed listening to that one. Um, also feeling a seven on that one. So let's move on to the next track, which is an instrumental, I guess, uh, which is called Butterfly 747. Or um, there are just no lyrics on Spotty favorite here, but we'll see. This one gets, goes straight into a breakbeat, which I really enjoy. Um, this right here really changes the um, tempo, the sound and the sonicness. This is heavy and I love the drums on this one. Also the experimental electronics and little vocal um, stuff coming into this one in a very weird way. It's pretty fun. So this one is really good. Oh, 
listen to this interlude ready and then we're going to talk about this this breakbeat track right there. So yeah, <laughs> Butterfly Seven Butterfly Seven Four Seven was a really fun breakbeat track, which for a four minute track is one of the um, shorter ones for this one. Besides the interludes, of course, and it's a fun one. It gets different instrumentation and just tempo all over it, and it was like brain food for me right there. Um, so much all of the place. Every second has a little different experimentation in the electronic kind of like stuff. They kind of like grab these little. Uh, micro vocals and stretch them in a weird way or get some filters on them and that's like really nice and I really enjoyed that track um, giving that one something between an 8 and a 9 yeah so let's see what the next track got for us I'll just call it Killer Bunnies It can always be found Danger, evil, rodent Multiplying every day is taking over Get on your knees and pray For your lives there we even had some like industrial rock kind of signs which was pretty interesting going into this track which was pretty uh, weirdly very different um there was a kind of like a scenario of um, like where these like killer bunnies are explained and they're on their way and they're coming and then they come in these like panic drums and um, her voice gets really strong, which was really heavy, and um, she never done has done this on this record, so it really worked in that sense. Uh, wow, what a check! That one was really fun, but also like uh, really weird. Um, I was, I'm wondering uh, how they came up with that, like that idea of like killer bunnies, and there, but yeah, cool track. <laughs> I give that one a 9. It's one of the shorter ones of the full tracks on this album and for that it really did well. Um, so yeah, because there was like so dense um, ideas on that track that all comes together that they also could like stretch in like 7 minutes but come on like such a like neat little track right here is perfect and I like that stuff so yeah, very good. So let's move on with the next track which is called Boo. Let's go. <laughs> Do not fear me. I bring you no harm. <laughs> Need to know the 
this one right here goes into straight hip hop, um, trip hop, I mean. Um, I love those um, synthetic little um, grungy like bass sometimes coming in. Um, the straight um, strings lines, um, like these digitally like tape strings or something, um, are pretty perfect on this one and really fun. Um, the whole track has a feeling of uh, like weirdness and like this weird dark place. And um, but right here, <laughs> this track is called Boo. It's like kind of funny what they're trying to do a more like scary at all with this trip hop stuff right here, which works perfect. And um, yeah, that's pretty interesting. But something sometimes is also dark. I don't know why. But then this track is called Boo. <laughs> and I, I think this represents the album perfectly in that um, just like um, sense, if you know what I mean. So yeah. We appear. I'm getting near. So yeah, the track Boo is just a really fun trip hop um, banger that goes into like very weird kind of soundscapes, also those little bells that you can hear at the end and the really nice and soft um, jingle and melody is perfect and it gets the whole tone on a perfect side in a very different genre right here and it does it perfectly, I'm feeling a 9 on that one. Great! Yeah, I, I love that stuff. And this album is just like in this electronic way in such a diverse everywhere, like it's everywhere and I like that. So. Yeah, let's move on with the next track, which is called Where is the What if the What is in Why? We no destination. Why if the fish came from the sea? Why if my lover made me feel free? Why if my intake caused revelation? Why? Oh, I don't just make it. Why if your mama said you were bad? If you are lost, find where you're at. What is a number without any time? You. When you sleep at night, say how the blind man fills up with light. Why is the bird with nowhere to fly? How can you leave and not say goodbye? Why is a hunter with nothing to find? Why is the goodness without the young guy? When did the outfit came from the sea? Why if my lover made me feel free? Why if my intake caused revelation? Why if the point was reincarnation? Why if my shoes don't match my jacket? Now if it's not working, why don't you smack it? Why if your mama said you were fat? This is a track which goes into like some trip hop directions, but not fully. Um, there are some aspects that just goes into a dance pop way in a more of a reserved sound. Um, I wonder in which genre this really is in. It's like these couple of tracks in this album where we had like three so far, where you just can't really get it into this little smooth pop and trip hop um, incarnation that is like somewhere in between that. I don't really know how to explain it. Maybe it's down tempo, but I'm not really sure. Um, no, probably not. No. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. It's a good track. Again, right here. Um, I think the song is really fun, but the bass line on this track is also just really good. And all over, um, this is just a great album. Just a really fun listen. Um, the vocals really um, grew more and more and more on uh, me in this album, but it gets more conventional on that sound because at the beginning we also just had these like robotic and weird um, um, kind of like uh, singing and stuff, but it gets clearer throughout the album, which is also really interesting in the flow of sound. Yeah, great. 
from the tree wild if these questions just won't let you be why waste your time So yeah, the track Where is the What if the What is in Why um, is a good track. It goes into um, a transition for this album into a more smoother sound and also goes into a finale kind of like feeling of this album. Why it's really weird in that sense to um, talk about that stuff while this album um, mostly is just like this fun the world plays thing and the songwriting but at the end it goes into more of the like a serious kind of like feeling and also songwriting and right here and there um like what if the fish came from the sea what if my lover made me feel free what if my intake caused revelation what if the point was reincarnation what if my shoes don't what match miss my jacket and so on and it kind of like is like in a weird way this realization of this main character and the story of like yeah this is not fun and stuff like that i don't i don't know really but it's like so all over the place i sometimes don't know if something is meant serious and sometimes it's just like this little wordplay to get some songwriting across i don't know but i mean i enjoyed this and i think that that trick right here is also very good and feeling something between an eight and a nine yeah so let's see what the last trick got for us which is called who shot the go-go dancer Let's get into it. The last track. A long night in a tall story. Or will we ever know? I don't know. I don't know. From here on I decree You belong to me this here extended play This here house I built It's for me and you The little kid is too You're coming out to play So that's how this album ends up. Like, who shot the go-go dancer? And we go into the songwriting. It was a long night and a tall story. I nearly died of fright. Who shot the go-go dancer? Will we ever know? I don't know. Huh? That's interesting. Like, there could be like something like a, like a greater story about this. But all over this album, I really enjoyed just the sound and stuff. And just like these different sides of um, uh, experimental and interesting... Um, electronic sounds that goes in so many different directions from being very fun in the dance pop kind of like synth um sometimes it goes into trip hop sometimes it goes into a more smoother lounge side um and like building so many different experimental electronic and yeah i enjoyed that that's something i've never listened to um i think that the first side of this album has like more of a, like very diverse and abstract kind of production style well until the end it goes into a more of a um, reserved and smooth sound which well, sometimes is a little bit like in a very weird way and in, in a very weird way like for example boo um pretty weirdly unsettling <laughs> i don't know why but yeah i think that this album was great i had a lot of fun with this one there were a lot of interludes and stuff some tracks were a little bit too long for my taste but on the last track there even was like um, a silence of like four minutes um, and then there came in like um, uh, some lyrics again but they weren't on like this side right here um, but yeah pretty interesting Maybe there's something like a circle of like sounds or something. I'm really interested in that. But yeah, 
I'm going to listen a little bit more to this album and then I will give you some extra thoughts. But I really enjoyed this listen. It was really different and uh, fun. Listen, all over this one. Yeah. So thank you very much for requesting me this through Ko-Fi and I'll see you really soon. So yeah, um, I listened to Do You Like My Tight uh, Do You Like My Tight Sweater? Um, I think long three uh, times after my first listen right here. And I have to tell you, this album is really good. Um, I like just like all the electronic sounds which are very different and always very exciting, very endearing. And like every part of this album, especially like these uh, more trip hop and down tempo sides, which also goes into a more like darker tone. And also like at the end with the vocals are really like really good. For example, also goes into like straight up industrial rock or with some electronic style, um, side still, for example, on the track Killer Bunnies. But there are also sides that you can't really predict in the songwriting also, but also in the sound and the genres. For example, there also comes like a straight up um, breakbeat track into this one, like Butterfly 747, which is an awesome and fun track and like straight for an instrumental, also really entertaining just through all the instrumentation and sounds and experimentation in the electronic sides. Also, there's like the first track, Fun For Me, which is like straight up a banger of a track going straight into dance pop in a very weird way. And like the first like couple of tracks, for example, like the first seven or six tracks are all very um, robotic. Also with those vocals, getting a lot of vocal um, harmonies as a backing from those um, things that you use as a filter and stuff like that or just to double it and make your um, voice a little bit deeper and stuff like that that you um, wanted to do in the 90s that also Daft Punk did and um, like groups like that and this right here also goes into very different sides into more a smoother side while staying into the trip hop and dance pop way with those um, synth pop and electronic sides but also really smoothly into a, a lounge side and you can't really digest it into a certain genre for example, like many last tracks um, or in the midst of this album. In the midst of this album, I was a little bit sometimes split on these tracks uh, because they were very long and really didn't put much to the table. Of, for example, this one launch track, which was, um, um, has all over the same sound, especially um, changes up though, but not in a very different or um, interesting way, it's just like it's a kick in there and a little harmony, but that's it. But um, also there's the kind of like a concept going on with like an idea of sound, which is sometimes just talking about weird stuff and this like scatterbrain kind of like songwriting going to like weird stuff. Um, when they're talking about something really serious and after that they're talking about a sentence about, um, yeah, you're my favorite part of the donut or something, I don't know. But it's like really funny in that way. But sometimes, uh, for example, on the track Boo, it's also really haunting in a way, in a very weird way. I don't know how. It was the Killer Bunnies track. It's also just like a horror movie track. I don't know. It's so weird. But you get my point. This album is all over the place. It's really fun. It's a fun listen. Um, so, yeah, on uh, this album, I'm feeling a strong 7 to a light 8. So thank you much for requesting this. This was a really fun album, very different. And I had a lot of fun with it. So yeah, see you in the next review.